Good morning. So I'm uh, excited to share with you something that I've been uh, working on and thinking about for many, many years. So when you think about morality and ethics and justice and fairness and all of these concepts, you often think about human societies. You think about how we give up our own self-interest in the interest of the greater good right, of the society. And it's not unique to humans. Uh, some of you may have seen a TED talk by uh, a speaker who points out a number of examples of morality and fairness in primates, chimpanzees and monkeys. And in fact, through the entire animal kingdom, in many, many classes of animals, you see examples of this cooperative behavior emerge, and in fact, to the smallest creatures. There are species of garden ants that will uh, lick pathogens off the infected backs of their comrades. So my research has led me to kind of expand this notion of um, cooperation to look at not just living things, but also engineered systems. So let's begin with a bit of a definition. I think of um, autonomous agents that will make their own decisions, and they will look at what's in the world around them and decide in their own best interest what the decisions should be at each moment in time. And in my line of work, these agents are not living creatures, but they're engineered systems. And in particular, wireless devices and systems, things like wireless sensors, our mobile devices, ground robots, aerial robots, uh, routers, and autonomous vehicles with radios in them that can talk to other cars. So in my research, I develop and design algorithms and, and implement software that would enable these devices and systems to behave autonomously in their own interest. And then we use mathematics and uh, empirical studies to evaluate the behavior of these autonomous agents that we've engineered. So the challenge is that the very thing that makes autonomous agents interesting and useful, which is their ability to um, make their own decisions in their own self-interest, also impedes their ability to interact with others. And so when we think about uh, societies of autonomous agents, which are collections of these autonomous agents that have to interact with each other, and they're sharing some common resources, maybe it's time and space, or for the wireless devices I work with, it could be wireless bandwidth, it could be data, it could be energy. Uh, they really have to figure out how to do that. How do they interact as an autonomous network? So Garrett Hardin actually wrote about what happens when groups of autonomous agents or individuals in human societies interact with each other. He referred to this as the tragedy of the commons. He said, ruin is the destination toward which all men rush when they each pursue their best interest in a society that believes in such uh, sort of freedom of um, following your self-interest. So my central thesis is this. If you think about all of these different types of um, ethical and moral notions and concepts we have evolved and uh, see in our societies that are meant to help us identify when humans and individuals are behaving or misbehaving, and how society as a whole should penalize misbehavior and incentivize good behavior, that all of these moral and ethical notions in fact, can be extended to engineered systems. That we can get them to behave not just in their self-interest, but cooperatively. Let me give you some examples from my research. So consider a collection of wireless devices that are communicating through a wireless access point or a router, and we all have these in our homes now. And imagine that we have a software running on our wireless devices, our mobile devices, that autonomously, in the interest of the user that it's supporting, is trying to maximize the data rate and minimize the data delay that it experiences. People call it lag sometimes. And if we had similar autonomous software in all of our devices, each of them would do the same. So what's the problem? Well, it turns out that they can each enhance their own data rate by just sending more. 
But the delay that they experience depends on the behavior of the other autonomous agents in the network. It turns out that the more data you send in, the slower the network becomes for everyone. We've all experienced this in the context of traffic, for example. If you have a lot of cars on the highway, you drive slower. And so when we mathematically analyze this problem, we observe that, in fact, you do end up with this tragedy of the commons. Everyone behaves selfishly, and everyone's utility suffers. So I studied this problem with uh, two of my former PhD students at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. And uh, we formulated this problem mathematically. We analyzed it and really racked our brains for, for months to try and figure out how do you get over this. Well, it turns out what you need to do is to make the router also an autonomous agent and essentially behave like an evil mob boss. Sorry, I mean a government official. And what it has to do is to basically threaten them, right? And I'm an engineering professor, I'll make a slight digression. The way it threatens them is it gives them a function. And it's an f of x where x is the amount of data that they provide, and the f of x is the amount of data it's going to lose if they provide too much. So, well, what do these autonomous agents start to do? Well, they panic just a little bit. They go, wait a second, if I send too much, I'm going to lose data. And now when they compute the best solution for themselves in their own best interest, they take into account this threat from the router. And they compute a new solution. Each of them does the same. And amazingly, it turns out that if you design that function that I described carefully, the result is fantastic. Everyone's just eager to send the right amount of data, and everyone's happy. They get just as much data as they want through the network, they don't suffer lag, and all of this thanks to just a little threat. Let's look at a different example. This is a network of wireless sensors that's deployed in the RTH building in the southwest corner of our campus. It's a network of wireless sensors and actuators that uh, each have a processor and a radio that allows them to communicate with other devices nearby. And uh, it's really a test bed that allows us to uh, test out different applications and ideas that we have algorithmically. So we got to wondering, how do we get each of the nodes in this network to behave autonomously in a way that they would get benefit from their neighbors uh, and also basically collaborate so that the overall network performance, depending on the application, is as good as possible. Now, the actual details of what that means depends a little bit on the application, but we could formulate a canonical problem of cooperation in an autonomous network. So we have a collection of these autonomous agents. They talk to each other on what we call a network graph. So you have each agent can talk to a set of other neighboring agents. And the way we formulated this problem, everyone would benefit from their neighbor's contributions in terms of work or data. If the neighbors, for example, agreed to carry data for them, maybe gave them some information that they needed. But in fact, as in many real networks, there's sort of a cost to contributing yourself. It doesn't actually benefit you because you might be using up time or energy or resources, uh, or in some cases, even privacy. If the information that you're asked to share somehow belongs to uh, some personal information about a user that you represent. So we formulated this problem and looked at what would happen. Somewhat to our uh, disappointment, if you actually formulate such a problem where everyone benefits from their neighbors, but they don't want to contribute, the result is sort of this amazingly lazy society of autonomous devices. They're all like, well, it'd be nice if someone helped me, but they're sort of sitting in their chairs and not willing to lift a finger. So what do you do? So we found that the solution you had to engineer to get them to be more active, more proactive, more helpful, was actually a moral principle, a reciprocity rule. Something that said, listen, if you contribute something to your neighbors, you can get something back from them. Right? This is very related to the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Just implemented in software. So what happens now? An amazingly unique uh, set of results where 
all of these nodes suddenly just wake up and chatter excitedly with each other. And you're like, what can I do for you, buddy? And like, oh, I'd love to help you. Tell me more. And just this engineering of reciprocity into their interactions makes it a much more productive society. And we can build networks now where nodes are behaving in their self-interest, but because of this moral principle embedded in their software, they will exchange information, data, and help each other out. And behave in a way that we as network designers, as engineers, would like the network to behave. To give you another example, in recent years we've been looking at autonomous agents that would be pieces of software that drive our cars for us. And this is going to happen in the near future, if you've all been following the news. And not only will each car be able to drive itself autonomously, it's also going to be able to interact with other cars on the road and with other devices nearby in the infrastructure. And so you can ask these same questions. If they're going to behave in their self-interest, would there be scope for them to collaborate, to cooperate in ways that benefit uh, society as a whole? And so to give you an example of such a problem, we've looked at a smart city of the future, which is full of these autonomous vehicles carrying people back and forth from their home to work to uh, places after work and so on. And we asked the question, well, first of all, what's in their self-interest? And in this case, for each vehicle, the self-interest would be to get from point A to point B as quickly and conveniently as possible. But from the city's perspective, the best interest of the society as a whole might be better served by some other objective. For instance, you might want to reduce the environmental impact of these autonomous vehicles. You might want to make sure that the traffic in residential parts of the city doesn't get too crowded or polluted so that you're not seeing a lot of impact on uh, people or at schools and playgrounds. And what we did essentially was to come up with an algorithm that sets the traffic speed limits on all of the road stretches in the city that the autonomous cars are asked to follow. And our algorithm carefully configures these speed limits for uh, each of the streets in such a way that if each of the autonomous vehicles were just pursuing their self-interest, they're not necessarily caring about the good of society, they're just focused on getting their passenger from A to B in the shortest time possible. But by engineering these speed limits throughout the city, we can get them to drive in ways that essentially naturally keep them away from populated areas, from sensitive areas. So, to conclude, I think we're still a long ways off, but we're really beginning to understand how to engineer cooperation, morality, ethics, fairness, justice, all of these things we take for granted in our societies, but to that world of autonomous agents that are going to be working with us and helping us. Thank you.